Good morning, friends. Greetings and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation over the last 32 years of practicing pharmacy, I've seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, It is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment basis. And while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, if you or a loved one has a health challenge that you'd like help with, if you have a success story you'd like to share, or if you just want to contribute to the conversation, We want to hear from you. We welcome your calls at 844-236-6010, 844-236-6010. If you have questions about anything we're speaking about here today, formulations, ingredients, the longevity products, or our Truth Skin Health products, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. You can head to brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com if you want to purchase the longevity products, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. You can also click on the join the team link at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. If you want to start a longevity business, if you want to earn thank you checks associated with having your own business, be your own boss. If you're an entrepreneur, you like the entrepreneur lifestyle. If you just want to get your products at the wholesale price for a one-time $25 fee, click on the join the team link at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. You can also call 866-735-2470. That's 866-735-2470 for more information. All right. Welcome back to the bright side. We have been hitting hitting the digestive system pretty hard here for the last couple of weeks, months, for good reason. Well, pretty much ever since I've been on the program, we're always hitting the digestive system hard because it's really all about the digestive system when it comes to health. That the digestive system is how we get nourished and the digestive system is how toxicity gets into the body. So it just pretty much makes sense that if you want to focus on one, one part of the body, if you want to focus on the soil of the disease tree, you focus on the gut. And when I say soil, I'm talking about not just soil, but soil organisms. The soil is uh, what gives rise to plants via microorganisms that live in it. M- much of, um, of what we call soil is microorganism, is bacterial, and likewise in the gut. The soil of the gut, the soil of the body, is the, the um, bacteria in the gut, in the small intestine. And these bacteria are incredibly, incredibly important. For better or for worse, the bacteria... Uh, the bacterial uh, population in the gut has to be tightly regulated, just the right amount and just the right types. There's probably 600 or so different species, maybe more, 600 to 1,000 different species of bacteria that live in the gut. That alone tells you you've got a pretty complex ecosystem living in your digestive tract, uh, really in your whole body. Your entire body is covered with bacteria. There's actually a bacterial cloud that is emitted off the f- off of our bodies. We walk around in a cloud of bacteria. There's a bacteriosphere in the atmosphere. There's a layer of bacteria that's made up of all the bacteria that we're emitting off of our body. If we could just see microscopically what is all around us, the livingness that is all around us, it would completely change our perspective on life. So anyway, our body is covered. It's it's saturated with these bacteria, but the population... 
the number of the bacteria and the type of the bacteria are tightly controlled, tightly regulated. If bacteria overgrow or if you have the wrong kinds of bacteria, you can, you can have some serious health problems. In fact, I would venture to say every health problem has some element of what's called dys, D-Y-S, messed up, biosis, bacteria, dysbiosis. That's, that's a collective umbrella term for anything that's good, messed up with the microbiome, with the, with the universe of bacteria that lives with us, as us, and in us. This universe of bacteria, when, when the population is thrown off, either too much or too little of certain ones, the type of bacteria that are present are, th are thrown off. That's called dysbiosis, and it underlies everything. Last program, we started talking about something called SIBO, S-I-B-O, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. Small intest eh, SIBO is one of the major causes of heartburn. And there's lots of reasons why people get SIBO. Hypothyroidism is probably the classic reason why people get SIBO. And, and because the intestine regulates the thyroid, you get this vicious circle where hypothyroidism leads to a messed up intestine, which leads to a messed up thyroid, which leads to more messed up intestine or dysbiosis. And you get this circle of this downward circle of disease. And it underlies everything, folks. And the, the good news is, is this is all in our control. There's nothing a doctor can do here. There's nothing a doctor can do here. Zippo nada. And you're not going to hear that from a doctor, of course, or the medical model, because they want you coming in. That's how they make a living. The good news about the fact that SIBO underlies everything and hypothyroidism and SIBO and this vicious downward circle is because we have control over the whole thing. You can throw diabetes into the mix too or, or dysglycemia and of course stress doesn't help. Cortisol doesn't help. Cortisol will really throw off the digestive system. Cortisol will uh, elevate a cortisol, elevate a stress hormone, will throw off your immune system. So you'll be more at risk for bacterial overgrowth and, and um, uh, immune or antibody deficiencies. Abdominal problems, you know, uh, some called adhesions can lead to small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. Adhesions, also known as scar tissue. Adhesions can lead to chronic inflammation. And guess what? If you've had surgery, like a hysterectomy or gallbladder removed the old way, if you've had any kind of surgery where they cut you open, you're pretty much guaranteed to have adhesions, which means you're pretty much, or at least you're at higher risk for something like SIBO. If you're not clearing out your estrogen, that can be a problem as well. Excess estrogens throw off bile, which has a, 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 plays a role in bacterial overgrowth as well. Bile, by the way, is antimicrobial. So it kills off excess bacteria, excess estrogen, or, or in a complete extra, incomplete estrogen elimination can lead to SIBO, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. And most importantly, the kind of foods we eat, especially processed carbohydrates and fruits for that matter and fruit juice yesterday we had dr jamie kaufman on and she says that a lot of uh, a lot of uh, gi specialists are telling people not to drink fruit juice i've been saying don't drink fruit juice for years i've been saying this especially for your kids don't give your kids fruit juice there is very little health benefit to fruit juice despite the propaganda that we hear about oranges and citrus there's a little vitamin c but you got to get your by the time the juice is, is uh, put into the package, frozen or, or processed, however it's processed, a lot of the nutrition is gone and the fiber is not there. And that means a quick release of sugar. And that means a very good chance of bacterial overgrowth. Bacteria love sugar. Eating the wrong, I would say eating the wrong kind of carbohydrates is probably the number one reason why people have small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. And it's almost impossible not to eat the wrong kind of carbohydrates in our culture today because we're just swimming in them. I'm talking fruit juice, but what about candy bars? What about um, Cheerios and sugar frosted flakes with milk and sugar on top of them? You know, pretty much everything we eat has an element of processed carbohydrate to it. I, I, I won't say everything, but a good 80 to 90% for most people. Yeah, you know, you have steak and seafood and veggies for sure. But the vast majority of our calories come from these processed carbohydrates, which are just a SIBO disaster waiting to happen. All right, got lines open. 844-236-6010 is our number. You're listening to The Bright Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We'll be back right after this.
Okay, we're back on the bright side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Got lines open, 844-236-6010, 844-236-6010. If you want to purchase Longevity products, call 866-735-2470 or go to brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com or criticalhealthnews.com. You can purchase products off the website or click on the Join the Team link if you want to start a Longevity business or just get your products at the wholesale price. And don't forget to check out our Truth Skin Health products at truthtreatments.com, including our new Collagen Recovery Complex and our Blemish Repair Complex, both of which uh, are available at truthtreatments.com. In addition to all our other Truth Skin Health products, Truth Transdermal C Serum, Truth Transdermal C Balm, our Truth Retinol 5% Gel, our Truth Retinol 1% Gel, and our Truth Biomimetic Mineral Mist are all up at truthtreatments.com truthtreatments.com also our cleansers as well forgot to mention those all right so uh, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth if you're uh, dealing with chronic abdominal pain or diarrhea or constipation or gas or bloating or acid reflux nausea dehydration fatigue chronic fatigue there's a really good chance, especially if you have more than one of these symptoms, there's a really good chance that you're dealing with small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. If you, uh, if you have this condition for a long period of time, you can end up with autoimmune diseases. You can end up with uh, osteoporosis, organ failure, liver problems, pretty much everything. Every, pretty much any health challenge you can name is going to have some element a small intestinal bacterial overgrowth and hypothyroidism, they go together. Small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, SIBO, and leaky gut, we can put those two in the, same, in the same basket, SIBO and leaky gut are connected to the thyroid, which is then connected to the gut, which is then connected to the thyroid. This circle, which is a fundamental component, a fundamental um, aspect of the triangle of disease, is health or the lack thereof in a nutshell. SIBO and the thyroid. Yes, diabetes and cortisol are in the mix there too. But really, it can be boiled down to the intestine and the thyroid. And you don't need to have your thyroid tested, by the way. If you're dealing with any kind of health challenge, you've got a thyroid problem, no matter what it says on the test. So many people will get tested and, and find out that they, their, their thyroid function is normal, but they got all the other symptoms. Forget your thyroid function testing. It's useless. It's a waste of time. All testing like that is a waste of time. Just go by your symptoms. And of course, SIBO can lead to acid reflux. It's a major cause of acid reflux, if not the major cause of acid reflux. And we're all taking antacids. It's the best-selling drugs, best-selling class of drugs in America are the antacids, Nexium and Prilosec and Zantac and Tagamet. Guess what? The chances are really, really good you're dealing with a small intestinal bacterial overgrowth SIBO issue if you have chronic acid reflux. And if you have acid reflux at night, and Dr. Kaufman touched on this yesterday, if you have acid reflux at night, chances are pretty good you're eating really close to bedtime and you're probably eating the wrong foods. Don't eat. We shouldn't be eating after a certain period of time, after four or five o'clock, I should say. First of all, because when you're sleeping at night, you don't want to be digesting food. When you're sleeping at night, you want to be growing and repairing. And if you're digesting food, that means resources are now being redirected to your intestine, away from your muscles, away from growth, away from repair. So that's first of all. Second of all, if you stop eating at 4 and don't eat till 11 o'clock the next day, or if you have breakfast eight, 6 or 7 or 8 o'clock the next day, but ideally you miss breakfast too, that's a period of time when you're ketogenic. That's a period of time, especially once you get going with this and your body's used to doing this, you become a fat burner. So try to eat, keep your eating, uh, eating meals or eating food between 11 and 4, 11 and 5. Guaranteed you're going to lose weight. If you strict, stick to eating in, in that 5-hour period between 11 and 4, guaranteed you're going to lose weight, depending on what you eat, of course. So SIBO is, uh, is a, uh, one of the major causes of acid reflux, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. In other words, bacteria overgrow and they start to emit things. You know, when bacteria are overgrowing, these are living creatures. So when we talk about SIBO, you're basically talking about an infestation of living creatures in a very delicate part of the body. And these living creatures, like all living creatures, emit gases, hydrogen, methane, wastes, enzymes, fluids, all kinds of stuff, acid. And then all, all this stuff can wreak havoc on the organism that is housing them, i.e. us. 
So it, when, when these bacteria overgrow, it makes perfect sense that, that every system in the body is going to be messed up. Think about it. You've got this infestation of bacteria and an, an infestation of bacterial wastes that are now floating around in your body. How can you not be sick? How can you not have a problem? And if it's all related to the kind of foods we eat, how can we not want to control those kinds of foods, especially these processed carbs that everybody is subsisting on? So when these uh, bacteria overgrow, they can produce gas. This gas creates an upward pressure that can force acid through the sphincter. Under ordinary circumstances, that sphincter is supposed to stay tightly shut when we have food in the, uh, when the stomach is doing its business, when there's food in there. If, uh, if there's pressure upward while the stomach is doing its business, it's very easy for stuff to slosh up into the esophagus. If you have GERD, gastroesophageal reflux disease, GERD, and you want to explore the SIBO connection, just try laying off sugary foods for a while. Just try lay, laying off super sweet foods and refined processed carbohydrates. Watch what happens. And stay away from something called fructooligosaccharides too, by the way, FOS. There's a, 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 a series of sugars which are specifically um, uh, formulated or, or structured, I should say, to feed bacteria. They're called the FODMAPS sugars, F-O-D-M-A-P-S. And there's a special diet called the low FODMAPS diet. FODMAPS, F-O-D-M-A-P-S, stands for uh, fructooligosaccharides, F-O-S. Fructooligosaccharides is kind of a mouthful. It's just basically fiber. It goes by the name inulin. You've probably seen that on on uh, ingredient X. Inulin is a kind of fiber that's found in, in fruits and vegetables. This is why fruits and vegetables, by the way, I should say vegetables especially, are, can be a problem for people. People say, oh, I'm a, I can't have any intestinal problems. I only eat, uh, I, I'm a vegetarian. I just eat vegetables. I just eat a plant-based diet. Dr. Kaufman yesterday was talking about a plant-based diet. I didn't want to say anything about you know, lectins and sugars. Plants, and, and by the way, Animals, human beings, are omnivores, and while we may have subsisted largely on plants and, and vegetables, it doesn't. That's not how we got big and strong. We got big and strong, and our brains got big and strong by eating meat. Now, I'm not a big believer in eating meat these days because of what how meat is processed. But the idea that we are vegetarians or plant or, or most of our calories came came from plants throughout our evolutionary history is just flat out wrong. You got to be careful with plants because of the lectins, the plant defense molecules like glucose, uh, gluten, and also because of the FODMAP sugars, the inulin, the fructooligosaccharides. FODMAP stands for fructooligosaccharides, disaccharides, monosaccharides, and polyols. These are just various forms of sugar. Sorbitol is a polyol. Xylitol is a polyol. Anything that ends with OL is a polyol. Monosaccharides are like glucose and fructose. Uh, disaccharides are like sucrose. Basically, it's sugars, and the FODMAPs-rich foods are basically your fruits and, to a certain extent, your vegetables, and most especially fruit juices. They're loaded with FODMAPs, and the mushier the fruit is, things like apples and pears and apricots, even berries, nectarines, these are very, these are FODMAP-rich. Watermelon, if, have you noticed, if you notice you, you, you've eaten pears and plums and watermelon, you don't feel so good, chances are pretty good you're dealing with SIBO, SIBO. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. Got lines open, 844-236-6010. We'll take a quick commercial break and come back with more good health information right after this. Okay, we are back on The Bright Side, 844-236-6010 is our number, and we've got lots of open lines for you, 844-236-6010. If you have questions about anything you're dealing with in terms of health, ingredients, or formulations, or Success story you'd like to share, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. From the journal Science Translational Medicine, antioxidant found to be effective in treating mice with arthritis, with osteoarthritis. A team of researchers in Belgium and the Netherlands have found that feeding a common antioxidant to test mice was effective in treating osteoarthritis. In their paper published in Science Translational Medicine, this was just uh, yesterday actually, the group outlines their study of the cause of the most prevalent joint disorder in the world. And what did they find? They found that osteoarthritis, which is a degenerative disease, and there is no cure according to, according to this article, uh, what they found was that it was a condition of oxidation, 
which is basically just deterioration of the joints. No, no surprise there. But here's where I'm really surprised. This is what surprised. Uh, this is what's surprising. This common antioxidant they had administered to test mice with osteoarthritis. They found that this common antioxidant reduced the loss of bone and reduced the loss of cartilage compared to untreated mice. Guess what? That's this common antioxidant is it's nothing more than n-acetylcysteine NAC which I had been talking about for decades since I first learned about it in pharmacy school when I was in pharmacy school they told us that n-acetylcysteine is used in emergency rooms to treat liver poisoning I'm like are you serious the NAC that I buy at the health food store for, for ten dollars a bottle or fifteen dollars a bottle that's the same stuff they keep in emergency rooms when I first learned that I was like are you kidding me and then I just started doing research on n-acetylcysteine and I found out that's good for everything N-acetylcysteine is good for emphysema. It's a prescription drug for uh, cystic fibrosis, for lung disease. N-acetylcysteine is one of the best uh, uh, ways to protect, pre uh, protect your liver from, from, hangover, from hangovers. NAC supports, uh, anti, has anti-acne benefits. Anti NAC added to benzoyl peroxide reduces the, the toxicity and the irritation associated with your acne creams. Oh, one more? NAC could be used for gambling addiction. NAC can be used for obsessive compulsive disorders. This is an absolutely mind blowing supplement. And I've said for years, my favorite non essential nutrient, N acetylcysteine. You get it anywhere. You get it on the internet, get it at a health food store. We should, be, we should all be taking N acetylcysteine. And now we find that if you have arthritis, you can get benefits there as well. The science and translational medicine just came out yesterday. All right. 844 236 6010 is our number. And we do have a empty board. If you want to get on board now is the time. Frontiers in Tech, uh, this is from Frontiers in Pharmacology and Medicines, research from the University of New Mexico. Study shows medical cannabis, yes, marijuana to the uninitiated, medical cannabis, medical marijuana is effective in treating a wide range of health conditions. Utilizing new technology, the University of New Mexico found that medical cannabis, i.e. medical marijuana, provides immediate symptom relief across dozens of health symptoms with relatively minimal negative effects. In two recent studies titled Patient Reported Symptom Relief Following Medical Cannabis Consumption and Effectiveness of Raw Natural Medical Cannabis Flower for Treating Insomnia Under Naturalistic Conditions, researchers found that patients experience statistically and clinically significant therapeutic benefits when they used cannabis for symptoms ranging from chronic pain to insomnia. Yet a million people a year are arrested for having cannabis. For ha and I don't even know how many millions of people or hundreds of thousands of people are in jail, uh, imprisoned for years because they had the nerve to carry around a weed with them or to sell a weed. Now we're finding out that there's incredible benefits. We're going to have Sanjeev Javia next week talking about the hemp FX products from Longevity. And by the way, if you're in uh, the Colorado area, I'm going to be doing a talk for my friend Tom Chenault and Marianne Niehaus at uh, uh, the Super Saturday in Longmont, Colorado. We're going to talk about CBD. CBD is a form or is a uh, fraction of the cannabis plant. The cannabis plant or what we call the marijuana plant or also the hemp plant has hundreds, maybe thousands of chemicals that fall into the family of the cannabinoids. And uh, there's research is being done as we speak, lots of research is being done to find various cannabinoids that have health benefits. Well, there's a, there's a sub-fraction of these cannabinoids called the cannabidiols, also known as CBDs. And these CBDs are unbelievable for pain and a whole wide range of, of health issues. Now, it's true that if you do the whole marijuana plant and you're trying to get um, some of the benefits, the pain relieving benefits or the anti-nausea benefits or the, the brain health benefits, uh, you're going to have to deal with getting high. That's the one problem. With, now, it may not be a problem for some people, but for a lot of people it is. You don't want to be high all the time, but you want to get the benefits of the cannabis. So there are fractions that don't get you high, but they still have wonderful pain-relieving brain health benefits. Anti, Not just pain-relieving brain health. They have all kinds of health benefits. And the CBDs are a fraction of this, these cannabinoid, uh, cannabinoids of the cannabinoid family, a group of children in the cannabinoid family that don't get you high, but have incredible health, health properties, health benefits, excuse me. <clears throat> and I, I should say most of these health benefits are, a lot of these health benefits are symptomatic, but because the cannabinoids activate the parasympathetic nervous system, growth hormone is secreted. 
the immune system gets stronger. The digestive system improves. Growth and repair are accelerated. So a lot of, you get a lot of benefits from these cannabinoids and CBDs that aren't necessarily, that are more than symptomatic. That actually can help anti-age the body. How do you like that? CBD has an anti-aging benefit because it helps relax things. All right, let's see. Got one more here, and then we'll get your calls. 844-236-6010. The effects of thiamine, that's vitamin B1, on breast cancer cells. This is an uh, article that was published in the journal Molecules. The treatment of breast cancer cells with thiamine significantly reduced their proliferation. This reduction is associated with a reduction in <clears throat> excuse me, glycolysis, which is how uh, cancer cells process sugar. Thiamine is one of the all-time great anti-diabetic and blood sugar supporting supplements along with vitamin B3, niacin. Thiamine is critically important for how the body handles sugar. And we know that cancer or cancer cells are burning through lots of sugar and that's how they grow. By using or by using thiamine pharmacologically, you can slow down cancer cell proliferation. Breast cancer is a scourge, a horrible disease. It affects one out of eight or now one out of seven women. If you do have breast cancer, you've been diagnosed with breast cancer, you may want to consider intravenous thiamine, intravenous venous vitamin, intravenous vitamin B1. And you might want to uh, refer your on oncologist to this, or your MD, to this um, article in the journal Molecules from April 2018, actually published June 16th, 2018, the effects of thiamine on breast cancer cells. All right, 844-236-6010 is our number. Let's go to the phones and say good morning to Ken in Washington. Good morning, Ken. Welcome to the Bright Side. Good morning, Ben. How are you? I am doing well. What's going on? I think I've, have I talked to you before? Are you Ken the pharmacist? Yeah, yeah. Yes, we have uh, several years ago. You're, and, are you a pharmacist uh, I, or you're in the pharmacy business somehow? Uh, um, I went to pharmacy school and That's right. uh, I, worked for, I worked in the industry for about 17 years. And uh, and I'm actually thinking about going back, but uh, back into anyway, what? Pharma back to pharmacy? Yeah, or? working for uh, for an antigen company. Interesting. Now, I think I, last time I talked to you, you were thinking about joining Longevity. It's been a couple of years, I think, since we've talked. Yeah. Well, I'll so, give you an update when we come back. Okay, good. Thank you, Ken. All right, I'm pharmacist Ben. Got lines open eight four four two three six sixty ten. You're listening to the Bright Side. We'll be back after this. Bright side. I'm pharmacist Ben. Eight four four two three six sixty ten is our number. Got lines open, and we're talking to Ken in Washington. Hey, Ken. Hey, hey, Ben. Hey. So, what's going on? How can we help you? Well, uh, I, just a couple random things. I was driving from the store. I came back, and I, I was driving past a uh, a farm supply store, and they were adverta uh, advertising CBD oil. And I okay. thought, my goodness, <laughs> we changed greatly in the last few years. Isn't that amazing? So, uh, Isn't that amazing? And I, it's like, I it's think, only been three you, or four years. Yeah. And uh, thank you for sharing and being a part of that movement that's just uh, uh, loosened people up to, uh, to right. be healthy. And so, uh, and another random thing, too, is uh, we have a parrot. As a pet, my kids are allergic to dog hair, cat dander, that kind of stuff. So we've always had birds. Well, I got our bird on Arthur's deck, and uh, so I tell everybody I got a bird on BTT. So, uh, <laughs> it, 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 you know, and the bird loves it, and uh, people think I'm nuts, and it doesn't now, matter. Wait a minute. Now, what's Arthur's deck? That's, is that a longevity product? Yeah, but it's, it's very similar to BTT. Okay, it's for animals? Yeah, uh huh. It doesn't have the uh, you know the the orange flavor and the stevia, but okay. it's, uh, but it's it's more dense uh, uh, nutrients instead of the the flavoring that humans require. And they're marketed for pets. Yes, uh huh. It's called Arthur Deck. Okay, well but I know it, pets it, pets benefit from supplements. Go ahead. Yeah, but essentially it's BTT for animals. That's awesome. That's awesome. I, I, I knew pets benefit from, I didn't know, I don't know much about birds, but do you have a dog or a cat? No, uh, our, our kids are allergic to. Uh, oh, yeah, you were saying. 
Uh, but if you have a dog or cat and you give them eggs, for example, or you give them uh, essential oils, essential oil liquids, you can see changes in their coat really quickly, especially if they have problems yeah. with their coat. But you can see changes even if they don't have problems with their coat. Uh, eggs and uh, essential fats make your, uh, your, pet, your cat or your dog's coat shine and strong. And so it would do the same thing for humans. Humans, humans and animals share a lot of uh, similarities when it comes to essential nutrients. There are some essential nutrients that... Uh, I think animals can make vitamin C, for example, dogs and cats can make, um, and cats have a particularly, a particularly, uh, particular need for taurine, T-A-U-R-I-N-E, because they're meat eaters and uh, taurine deficiency in cats is somewhat common. So you can get supplements like taurine uh, f- specifically for cats, but glucosamine has been used for kitty arthritis and doggy arthritis and goat arthritis for that matter. Uh, for a long time so there's presumably for if it's going to be used for cats and dogs it'll have benefits for you there's no way anybody can tell me supplements don't work based on my 32 years of experience more 35 years of experience taking supplements and dispensing supplements and studying and researching about supplements there's no way anybody's going to tell me that nutritional supplementation doesn't work you just got to know how to do it it has to be done correctly. It has to be done with the right products. It has to be done uh, strategically and intelligently. Some things with food, some things without food, certain nutrients taken together. There's, there's some strategy that's involved in it, and that's why you want a system. Like you don't want to take one B vitamin without all the B vitamins. You want to take your N-acetylcysteine with, with uh, glycine and glutamine if you want to maximize your benefits. There's, there's little tricks, and that's why we're on this program talking about these tricks. But for the most part, a nutritional supplementation program, especially if you've never supplemented before, will change your life. And that's why I like the longevity business so much. Did you, did you bail on your longevity, or are you still doing it, Ken? No, I'm, no, I'm still doing it. In fact, I'd like to share with you I, what I did. Uh, I started listening to you daily for about two years but about two years ago, and uh, you would always say, run, run the experiment on your own body to see what, you know, our bodies right. are laboratories, right? Let your body be a laboratory, so, exactly. Yeah, and so uh, yeah, when I started, you told me, hey, you're, you're going to eat less food, um, and I, you know, I didn't believe you. And, uh, and so I, I started on the Healthy Start Pack for two years. I avoided the 12 bad foods. I started eating eggs from happy chickens, you know, not, uh, not safe. Nice. Eggs. Nice. And, and, uh, all of a sudden now I, I've got more energy. I avoided, uh, I've got more energy. I lost 25 pounds. My fascia, uh, my connective tissue is unbelievably strong and, uh, it's really pumped up. It's, it's what are amazing. you using? What products are you using? Uh, uh, of what? Oh, longevity products. Oh, I, I use a healthy start pack a month. Okay. And then are you a distributor? Are you spreading the word or are you just yeah. taking stuff for yeah. yourself? Yeah. yeah? I, I, I've, got a, I've got a few people underneath me, you know, that I sell to. Very cool. Well, you should do some talks. Yeah. Sounds like you know some stuff. And you, with your pharmacy background, you could probably teach a lot of, you could probably spread the word pretty effectively and teach a lot of folks about health and nutrition. Well, and, I, and I have. I've, I've taught diabetes classes. And, nice. Uh, I've been reading about Alzheimer's, reversing Alzheimer's now. And you know, the medical model does not reverse Alzheimer's, but we know how to do it. They vaccinate. Uh, they, like, they want to vaccinate you now. Did you hear me talking about that the other day? They want to give you a vaccine. No, no, no. They'll create, <laughs> you know, crazy. you and I know they'll create some ridiculous thing next, yeah. you know, but, yeah. um, and, and it'll profit them, I guarantee you, but it won't profit us. And so, uh, and you and I are interested in taking care of, of us, right? So uh, anyway, you, I've learned a ton from you. So I just want to thank you. If I, I have appreciate time, that. Can I talk? A, can I talk? Oh, I got plenty of time. Just me and you here. When did you graduate pharmacy school, Ken? I did not graduate. Ah, I, you I graduate. went in the seventies. I went two years to pharmacy school, and it was awful. I just, I just hated <laughs> it. And so uh, uh, we had, we had to wear ties to laboratory. We had, we had bells that would let us know when class began and class ended. It where was, was this? Kind of a, where did you Where did you go to school? Uh, Pullman, Washington. Okay. All right. And anyway, it, it was way different than you in Boulder, Colorado. Trust me. <laughs> um, uh, anyway, so uh, where was I going? Oh, I, I wanted to ask you about Bowen's disease. I had about a what, uh, about bone okay. disease. I'm sorry, bone no, disease. Bowen, B-O, B-O, oh, Bowen's B-O, disease. Yeah, 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 yeah. Bowen's yeah. disease. Okay. Yeah, so I had that. It was just like a, a kind of a wound. It would never heal on my leg. 
Okay. And uh, I, had it, I had it removed by a dermatologist. He told me it may come back, you know. Okay. And, uh, and so I went on it, and it talks about squamous and, and right. skin cancer. And all Bowen's that disease stuff. is skin cancer. For the listeners, it's a squamous, squamous, skin, a squamous cell carcinoma, skin cancer. Yeah. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Is there, is, there, is there something I should target to uh, just to yeah. kind of keep it? Yeah, absolutely. Unchecked? Absolutely. Vitamin C, for one. Uh, lots okay. of fatty nutrients and acetylcysteine. Before you go out, are you, are you light-skinned? Are you fair? Uh, no, I'm actually dark-skinned. Okay, good. Yeah, so uh, uh, get a little bit of sun, but don't burn. And make sure you're doing lots of antioxidants, as uh, vitamin C as well as vitamin E, and acetylcysteine, selenium. Uh, and then look for other things, too. It's, it's, it would be unusual for you just to have a skin problem just have Bowen's disease. So look for other things that you can work on, especially, obviously, you know, the gut is the most important, but other things that you can work on will help you with your skin. Don't consider it a, it's not a skin problem as much as it's a, a sign that uh, the skin cells are not doing their business appropriately. And that usually involves the connective tissue in the blood. And that's pretty much where you want to work is in the connective tissue in the blood. And that starts with the digestive system always. Mm-hmm. All right. Okay. Anything else? You can use, you know what else? If you use topical vitamin C, that can help too. But I'd be more concerned about what, what's going on in your system that's leading to the, uh, that's making the skin cells divide rapidly. Well, it's I usually think, a size uh, up. The, I think the Healthy Start Pack has all of those nutrients except for N-acetylcysteine. Throw that in. Throw that into the okay. mix. All uh, do right. You, do, you take a da- do you take it daily, Ben? I, I take it daily. I take probably... I don't even, you know, sometimes I'll take a thousand milligrams, sometimes 1500 milligrams. Okay. I'll take it. Right. Yeah. Well, I've been taking it daily for, for years. Keep, keep, uh, keep doing what you're doing, Ben. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Ken. I appreciate that. Thank you from a fellow pharmacist or almost pharmacist. Anyway, I appreciate that. Yeah. And you yeah. keep, keep going as well. Good to talk to you again. Yeah. Likewise. Right. Thanks, Ben. All right. Take care. All right. That's my buddy, Ken. I talked to him last a few years ago. I hadn't talked to him for a while. I love my smart listeners. Thank you to everybody for listening to The Bright Side. And we're just out of time. Thanks for listening to The Bright Side. Please check out our websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com for all the longevity products. And think about joining The Bright Side Ben team. If you like nutrition, if you like health, if you benefited from it, you or your family or your loved ones have benefited from a nutritional supplement program, pay it forward. Click on the, click on the Join the Team link at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. Start a longevity business and help change the world at the level of most fundamental level there is, which is the level of good health and nutrition. Also, please check out our Truth Skin Health products at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Have yourselves a wonderful, beautiful, awesome, spectacular day. We'll talk to you all later. Bye for now. I'm not afraid of